الحمد لله صلاة والسلام على رسول الله على آله وصحبه وموالاه أما بعد After praising the Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala and passing salutation upon His Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم We request the brothers just to come as close as possible so that Allah Azza wa Jal put baraka into our class and that the dua will be accepted from us جزاكم الله خيرا وأحسن الله إليكم We are still in the correction of our aqeedah and we're talking about a very dangerous group and those group are called the hypocrites when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he had divided the people into three categories in Surah Al-Baqarah ones which are the Muslims and the believers who are pure believers and we ask Allah Azza wa to be one of them and the other ones who are the pure hypocrite pure disbelievers the ones who are kuffar we know them they are kuffar outward and inward then the third ones, which are the most dangerous group, are the hypocrites, the one who fluctuates from one group to another. And we were speaking about them, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had addressed them in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, Surah At-Tawbah, which when also Surah Al-Nisa. And he had actually, the, the name of the names of the Surah Al-Tawbah is Surah Al-Fadiha, the one which is the exposer. And not only that, he had made a full surah named Surah Al-Munafiqun, that is the hypocrite surah, the surah that talks about the hypocrites. So if we see how dangerous they are, we could see them how, for example, in the battle of the Ahzab, the trench, they were giving some deceptive words to their uh, to the Muslim people. They say to their brothers from the kuffar, in Ahl al-Kitab, from the people of the book, in ukhrijtum, if you to be expelled, and there was the Jews around the Medina from Banu Quraydah, uh, they were, and they were saying to them, if you're going to be kicked out, we will be with you. We will not obey anyone who will be this, uh, fighting you or he is on the other side against you. in قُتِلْتُمْ And if you to be fought, لَنَنْصُرَنَّكُمْ And we will give you help. وَاللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ إِنَّهُمْ لَكَاذِبُونَ But Allah testifies that they are liars. Those are the ones who had said also in the Battle of the Trench, مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُونَ Allah Azza wa did not give us a promise except which is deceptive. Did not give us the promise of the victory, nor his messenger. وَإِذْ قَالَتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ And some of the those hypocrites, they said, يَا أَهْلَ يَثْرِمْ O people of Medina, لَا مُقَامَ لَكُمْ فَرْجِعُوا uh, there is no way for you to stay here. Go back. And they ask in the Prophet of Allah for an excuse. That is, in Verily, our houses have been exposed to the enemies. So they could go back and not to participate. And it is not exposed. They just want to flee. Those are the hypocrites. Who are these people who had forged the lie against Aisha? Anha? The big forge, the big lie. They accused her of fornication with Sufwan ibn Mu'attil. It is the hypocrites again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had exonerated Aisha from above seven heaven. Who are these people in the battle of Uhud who were saying to the Muslims and to the believers and to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if there was a fight, we would have followed you. We don't think there will be a fight because the Prophet of Allah wanted to fight outside the Medina. Ta'ala uqatilu fi sabirillah. Allah's messenger and the Muslims, they said to come with us and fight in the sake of Allah, or at least defend. They said, if we knew that there will be a fight that will take place eminently, we will follow you. They are closer to the kufr from the belief. So they are closer to the disbelief from the belief. They say with their tongues, مَا لَيْسَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ What is not in their hearts وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا يَكْتُمُونَ And Allah knows what they are hiding. Those again are the hypocrites. And those are the ones who had mocked Allah's subhanahu wa ta'ala's verses and mocked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Tabuk when they were going back from Tabuk to Medina. So they said that the, to the people, the Muslim, oh, verily our qurra mean the ones who are pious and read Quran, they've got big belly, they only care about their food. So Allah Azza wa told his Prophet what these people had said. 
and Prophet of Allah, basically he had left them and he deemed them to be the hypocrites and kuffar. And some of them, they started hanging on to the qaswa, the she camel of the Prophet of Allah, trying to say, we are just joking. So Allah Azza wa had stated that in the Quran. They said to the Prophet of Allah, Inna ma kunna nakhudu wa nal'ad. We used just to play. We're not really serious. Then Allah's Messenger was told to say to them, Qul, say to them, O Muhammad, Abillahi wa ayatihi wa rasulihi kuntum tastahzi'um. Is it with Allah and his Messenger and his verses, the verses of Allah Azza wa in his sign, used to take the mick and ridicule? La ta'tariru. Don't give an excuse. Don't apologize. Qad kafartum ba'da imanikum. You have disbelieved after you have believed. If we're going to pardon some of you, which the pardoning were to two groups from the Muslims uh, were known, uh, but we will not, uh, part, we will not uh, basically pardon the other ones because they were hypocrites. Those are the hypocrites. Those are the ones who had taken a masjid called Masjid Dirar in order to split the Muslim. They built another masjid in a place not far away from the Medina. And they were saying that this masjid, they wanted to make sure that the other people come in. But actually, Allah told the Prophet Sallam, these people, they wanted to split the Muslims. masjidan They were these people who taken the masjid, which is dirar. Dirar means like to split, like a competing with the other masjid. Wa kufra and also to disbelief. Wa tafriqan bayna al mu'minin and also to split the believers. Wa irsad al liman harab Allah wa Rasulah and also to gather all those who have fought Allah and His Messenger. Min qabl wa la yahrifun and they they could make an oath. In aradna illa al husna. We want only the good by building this masjid. Wallahu yashhadu inna hum la kadibu. But Allah testifies that they are liars. Who are they again? The hypocrites. Those are the ones who is to ridicule those people who give charities. Those are the ones who ridicule those people who give in charity from the believers, males and females. Those are the ones who give only what they can do from their work. So they are taking the make. Look how much they give little. Allah Azza wa Jal is going to prepare for them a severe punishment. Those are the ones who did not go with the Prophet of Allah in the battle of Tabuk. And they said, well, it is too hot now. And they said the ones who stayed behind, they did not participate in the battle. Low, about 80 of them. And they did slack to fight in the sake of Allah with their selves and their wealth. And they said, they said, don't go out in the heat. Because it was during the summer. Say to them, O Muhammad, that the heat of the fire, of the hellfire, is much hotter than the heat of the summer that Allah asked it to come out. If they have, have common sense, let them laugh, but little. On the day of resurrection, it's going to be a big consequence as a recompense and a punishment for what they have earned. Those again are the hypocrites. So the hypocrites basically have hidden inside them the kufr and with their tongue and their outward actions they have presented Islam. They are very dangerous on the Islam and the Muslimin and the Muslims all the time in all the places. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for them not just the punishment in the hereafter, but also the punishment in the dunya. Yes. Punishment of the dunya, Allah azza wa commanded the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fight them, to make jihad against them. So in Surah At-Tawbah, there's an ayah which was repeated twice in Tawbah and Surah At-Tahrim. Ya ayuhal Nabi, O Prophet, jahil al-kuffar, strive and make jihad against the kuffar, wal munafiqeen, and the hypocrites. Wa ghulub alayhim, and be severe against them. Wa ma'wahum jahannam, wa bi'sa al-masir, and they are about to be a hellfire, and what an evil destination. Also again, the same ayah, word for word, in Surah At-Tahrim. And the kuffar, when you fight them, you fight them with the sword. But the hypocrites, you fight them, not the sword. You fight them with the tongue. You want to demolish their shubuhat and that whole matters. They throw at the believers. And by the way, jihad with the tongue is more rewardable and more important than the jihad with the sword. Why? Because the jihad of the sword, everybody can do it as long as you train. But the jihad of the hypocrites, only the scholars can do it. The one who are knowledgeable. So this is where 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded his Prophet وسلم, to strive against him and to demolish their shubuhat and doubtful matters. Also, from the punishment in the dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prohibited the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to pray upon the one who dies from amongst them. And not only that, not to stand next to his grave. Do not pray on any one of them that they die. Don't even sit or stand next to their grave. The reason behind this ayah was that the Prophet وسلم, had Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Abdullah is a companion. His father is the biggest hypocrite in Medina. And Abdullah when his father died, he didn't want to go and pray on him. But he said to the Prophet ﷺ, Messenger of Allah, it looks going to be a scandal for us. He had been, he died and nobody had actually offered a prayer upon him. Nobody had washed him. They just, you know, shrouded him and they put him in the grave, just like a carrion, a dead animal. So the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted basically to give a good gesture to his son, who is the Muslim, the Sahabi. And also at the same time, remember, Ubay ibn, Abis, Ubay ibn Salul, Allah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, he died uh, outwardly as a Muslim, because he looks like a Muslim, dressed up as a Muslim. But Allah exposed his heart as to be what? As a hypocrite. And the companion, they know that he's a hypocrite. So when the Prophet ﷺ went to the grave of Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, the biggest hypocrite, he asked for him to be dug out. So he was dug out and was taken out. And then he was there. He was not even, nothing having. So he, he had his clothes on. So when the Prophet of Allah, he blew onto him to remove the dust from his head to his toe. He said, what a, I wish we'd done this before. And then he put him in the, and he had given him his shirt. Prophet of Allah, he's given his own shirt, his own clothes to this person. SubhanAllah. Even the clothes of the Prophet of Allah will not benefit this hypocrite. He will be in hellfire, at the bottom of the hellfire. So he was put back again in the grave. And he's about now to offer a prayer onto him. And Umar Khattab is, Dragging the cloak of the Prophet of Allah, Messenger of Allah. Are you going to be praying upon this enemy of Allah? He says, oh, I'll leave me, Umar. Well, I want to pray. Oh, Messenger of Allah is the enemy of Allah. How can you pray upon him? Prophet Sallallahu he said, I have been given the choice and I have chosen. That is to pray upon him. Then Allah Azza wa said this verse. Don't pray upon any one of them, O Muhammad. So he's, Allah Azza wa he said that Umar Khattab was right and correct. Don't pray on any one of them. And don't even stand to next day, because they have disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger, and they've died as corrupted. Also, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade his Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi to seek forgiveness for them, because Allah azza wa jal He had said in Surah Tawbah that istaghfir lahum o Muhammad, seek forgiveness for them. Aw la istaghfir lahum, even if you don't seek forgiveness for them, in istaghfir lahum sabiina mara, if you seek forgiveness for them seventy times. Allah will not forgive for them. Why? Because they've disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger. Prophet of Allah, he started making seeking forgiveness for the Mushrikeen. He sought forgiveness for Abu Talib. But Allah's Messenger was told by the Almighty, you should not seek forgiveness for those who died upon shirk. Prophet of Allah, he said, I'm going to make sick, maybe I will seek forgiveness more than 70 times. Huh? Maybe Allah will accept my, my invoking of forgiveness. But Allah just said to him, no. There will no be forgivings for those people who died as hypocrites and kuffar. Also, as a punishment in this dunya, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept from them any deeds that they have done in this life, whether it is good deeds or good charities. قُلْ أَنْفِقُوا طَوْعًا أَوْ Give charity, whether being compelled to do it or whether it's your own choice. If you're your own consent, you gave the charity. It will not going to be accepted from you. You were corrupted people. What was the thing that this sadaqa of theirs was not going to be accepted by Allah? They're only because they have been bleeding on Allah and His Messenger. And they only come to the prayer when they are lazy. And they only spend charity while they dislike it. So also Allah Azza wa Jal commanded his Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to give them the tidings of hell and punishment in the dunya and in the akhirah. Give the tidings of the, these hypocrites that they will have a severe punishment in this dunya and the akhirah. 
As for the punishment in the Akhirah, we'll choose some. First, on the land of the gathering, Ard al Mahshar, after we come out of the graves and we go to the land of the gathering, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose them because they look like Muslims. Some of the Muslims, they didn't know that they were kuffar. Allah was going to expose them. There. So when Allah is going to say something that will distinguish between the believers and the hypocrites, because the kuffar already been sent to the helper. Now we have Muslims who are mixed with non-Muslims, but they look Muslim. They are the hypocrites. So Allah Azza wa Jal will command everybody to prostrate. The believers will be able to prostrate, but those hypocrites, they will have their backs standing. They couldn't even bend in. Why? Because Allah prevented their backs of prostrate. Because they were not prostrating in the dunya for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ When Allah exposes his shin, and they will be called to prostrate. They will not be able to do so. That is their uh, eyes and they're staring in terror and fear. Humiliation is upon them. They were to be called to prostration when they were having safety and they could do it. But now they were not going to be doing it. On the Sirat, when we pass the Sirat, remember before the Sirat, all the Kuffar have been thrown into hell. Only the ones who are Muslims and the ones who pretended to be Muslim. Those are the hypocrites. They will go on to the Sirat. Sirat is the bridge which is over the hellfire. The other side is Jannah. And the Sirat is going to be dark. And it's very sharp as we have explained in some of our lectures. And sharp, raised like a sharp into the razor. And you have to cross the Sirat as fast as you can because there are hooks coming from hell and beneath you, and they will hook you down. The more you have from the sins, the slower you're going to be. And the more you are pious, the faster you're going to be. All the lights are taken out. The sun being thrown to the fire. The moon was thrown into the fire. All, all of this have been thrown into the fire. No light. The believers will be given the light. Their lights will be on their rights. And it's really powerful. They can see. And the more believer you are, the more light you're going to get. So the believers will pass. And then behind them, those are the ones who are hypocrites. But the hypocrites, they will have no light. Some of the believers are not hypocrites. Their light is so slow. Some of them is flickering on, off, on, off. On, he will walk. Up, he will stop. On, he will stop. It's a big sirah. And as I said, the more time you spend on the sirah, the more vulnerable you are. You're going to be maybe hooked or scratched, both by those hooks, which comes from the helper. Allah, he had said to us, When you see the believing males and females, that is their lights, they go with their rights, and between in front of them. Bushrakum Get a glad tiding. Oh. When Allah commands the angels to tell us, Pushrakum This is glad tiding, O believers. Jannatun tajri min tahti al anhar, khali na fiha dalika, who will fawzul adim, gardens underneath which rivers will flow. This is the supreme success. As soon as you hear this word, you'll be calm and settled. Alhamdulillah. So I'm going to go to the Jannah, which is on the other side. Now the hypocrites. Male and female hypocrites, they will say. The ones who believe. Wait. We just can't just borrow from your light. Believers will say to them, go back. Find your torch. Find a torch for you, so I find a light for yourself. Then a fence will be between them. The believers who are already on the path, and the ones who are hypocrites, they're trying to pass. The side which faces the believers, it's got mercy. And the one which is on the other side, facing the hypocrites, is the punishment. Those hypocrites will start calling with the fence. They were calling. We were with you all the time, praying with you. Yes, you were with us. 
walakinnakum fatantum anfusakum but you actually put yourself into fitna wa tarabbastum wa irtabtum you had doubts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you had doubts about the day of resurrection and that's why you were not praying for the sake of Allah wa gharratkumul amani and deceptions had deceived you and there is life and staying in the life hatta jaa amrullah until the day of resurrection had come the commands of Allah wa gharratkum billahi alghurur and alghurur is shaitan iblis had de deceived you and made you not to believe in him falyawma la yu'khadhu minkum fidya today there would be no ransoming for them no ransom would be taken from you can't just say i would ransom my money and wealth and whatever no ransom will be accepted from you wala min alladhina kafaru and not also from those people who disbelieve hypocrites and disbelievers trying to ransom themselves no ransom will be accepted qal ma'wakum an-nar hiya mawlakum wa bi'sal masir they are about it will be the hellfire and what an evil destiny third punishment hellfire where first allah azza wa jal will combine between them and the kuffar qal inna allah jami'u al-munafiqin wal kafirin fi jahannam jami'a allah will gather the munafiqin hypocrites and the disbelievers in hellfire together why not because the person he is along with the person whom he loves so if you love a hypocrite if you love a disbeliever you're going to be with him on the day of resurrection if you love the believer you will be with the believer so the hypocrites they were with the believers outwardly but inwardly they were what with the kuffar their hearts were kafir so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in describing those hypocrites hum lil kufri yawma idin aqrabu minhum lil iman verily they are closer to the kuffar than they are closer to the people of iman also allah azza wa jalla will put them in the lowest of the hell fire inna al munafiqin fi al darki aw fi al darak al asfal min al nar wa lam tajid lahum nasira they will be in the bottom of the hell fire and there will be no helpers for them allah azza wa jalla also will curse them and will have his wrath upon them and he will prepare them an abode of hell fire which is going to be forever they will not come out of it forever wa'ad allah al munafiqin wal munafiqat wal kuffar Allah had promised the hypocrite males and females and also the disbelievers nar jahannam the hell fire the fire of the hell fire khalidina fiha they will be dwelling there forever ya hasbuhum this is going to be for them wa la'anahum Allah and Allah will curse them wa lahum adhabun muqim and they will have a permanent perpetual punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also he says wa yu'adhib al munafiqin wal munafiqat wal mushrikin wal mushrikat Allah will punish The male and females hypocrites, male and females mushrikin polytheists, abwani na billahi dhanna sawa. The one who always think in evil way about Allah Azza wa Jal. Alayhim da'iratu sawa. Upon them the evil, upon them the punishment. Wa ghadim Allahu alayhim. And Allah will have his wrath upon them. Wa la'anahum. And also he had cursed and wa adda lahum jahannam. Wa sa'at masira. And he prepared for them the hellfire and what an evil abode. what are the descriptions of these hypocrites so we could know them number one they are liars just like their hearts are full of nifaq and hypocrisy their tongue is full of lies allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had spoke about them when they came to the prophet sallam in surah al-munafiqun verse 1 qal idha ja'aka al-munafiqun when the hypocrites come to you and they would say qal they would say nashhadu innaka la rasulullah we say and testify that you are the messenger of Allah wallahu ya'lamu annaka la rasul and Allah knows already that you are his messenger we don't need your testimony testimony mr hypocrite you know support to say that wallahu yashhadu inna al-munafiqina la kadhibun and Allah testifies that these hypocrites are liars prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the hypocrite sign of three qal idha haddatha kadhab if he talks he lies وإذا وعد أخلف إن في promises he breaks his promise وإذا تمنى خان and if he to uh, trust to be trusted he will betray his trust also the prophet of Allah said four things if one of them has one of them he will have a hypocrite character if you have all of them he will have pure he will be a pure hypocrite who are these the ones قال if it to be trusted he betrays if he as well talks he will lie and if he is to give a covenant he will prove to be treacherous and wa idha khasama fajr and if he uh, is to be this in dispute he will go immoral so the hypocrite his heart is been ruined by hypocrisy and his tongue is been ruined by lying 
So he is from the worst and most evil of the people, most misguided. Prophet he said, إِذَا أَصْبَحَ ابْنُ آدَمُ When the son of Adam gets up in the morning, فَإِنَّ الْأَعْبَاءَ كُلَّهَا تُكَفِّرُ الْلِسَانُ All the limbs, they come humbling themselves before the tongue. They're saying, إِتَّقِ اللَّهَ فِيرَ Fear Allah in our sake. Fear Allah for us because we are with you. فَإِنَّمَا نَحْنُ بِكْ فَإِنْ إِسْتَقَمْتَ إِسْتَقَمْنَا وَإِنْ عَوَجْنَا عَوَجْنَا If you're to be straight, we, all of us will be straight. And if you're to be crooked, we will all be crooked as well at the same time. Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَلَا إِنَّا فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَى Verily, in the human being's body, there is a flesh. مُضْغَى إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ If it is, mashallah, healthy, the whole body is healthy. And if it is corrupt, the whole body is corrupt. قَالْ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ It is the heart. So if the heart is corrupt and ruined, the whole body all of it is ruined, including the tongue. Also, from their descriptions, that you could look at them, man, but they might be admiring you. You could be admiring their, themselves. They are having the body of a human being and the heart of a devil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, again, Surah Al-Munafiqun, verse number four, in describing these hypocrites, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَمْ if you to see them, O Muhammad, you will be astounded with their bodies. And if they speak, then you will listen to them. Why? Because they've got nice words. They speak poshly. They speak in a way that might capture your heart. Like they are wooden things laid on the, on, the, on the wall, meaning they have no benefit whatsoever. They're not like a tree going, just like no benefit. Every time there's a, a cry, a shout, huh? they will be scared, they're coward. They are the enemies, O oh Muhammad. They will have and be alerted and be warned against them. May Allah fight them wherever they are. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, From the people whom you've admired, what he says in this hadith dunya. And he will testify, oh, wallahi, I have got, mashallah, good heart. My heart is full of everything that, which is good for you. Yet he is the worst, the most opponent enemy to you. But if he leaves and you're not seeing him, he will cause corruption in the land. In order to corrupt into it. And also to ruin all the harf, the plowing of the land, and nasl, all the lineage. Wallahu la yuhibbul fasad. And Allah does not like those people who spread the fasad. Fasad, everything which is corruption, all of it which is mischief. And it has been said to him, Fear Allah. He will be some, ah, oh, I'm not going to confess my mistake. He will be holding to his mistake because of his pride. قال فحسبه جهنم ولا بئس المهاد enough and suffice for him hellfire and what an evil abode so this type of people are the most dangerous onto the Muslims Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إن أخوف ما أخاف عليكم the most thing that I fear upon you or the most thing I fear upon my ummah قال منافق عليم اللسان every hypocrite whose tongue is Mm, you know, if he speaks, people listen to him. He's good in words. He's eloquent in his speech. That is the worst or the most thing that the Prophet fears upon this ummah. Why not? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, They are the enemies. So be alerted against them. They have two double-faced. And that's why they're going to have two tongues in the helper. Yes, they come to people like this and they come to the other ones like this. So they have two faces. They come to the believers, they speak things to satisfy the believers. When they come to the kuffar, they will come and satisfy the kuffar. Always fluctuating between this and that. When they face the believers, well, we believe. But when they are with their shayateen, the kuffar, they will say, we are with you, but we're just taking the mick. I'm just taking uh, advantage of those yeah, uh, naive Muslims. This type of people from the worst of the people. Tajiduna Mishirar in Nas, said, from the worst of the people, you find 
ذا الوجهين ذا وان دبل فيس الذي ياتي هؤلاء بوجه كم تو ذيس بيبل وذ فيس اند ذا اذر وانز وذ انذر فيس ذوز ار ذا وانز هو هاف تو تونز الله ويل ميك ذيم تو تونز اوف هيل اوف فاير ان ذا هيل فاير سو ذي ار فلكتويتي بين كفر اند ايمان سو ذي ار نوت وذ ذا كفار كومبليت بيكوز ذي ار وذ ذا كفار بايسيكلي وين ذي ار اوتوردلي Uh, and, and, and also inwardly. So they are so actually, so they are not with the kuffar complete outwardly and inwardly because outwardly they are with the believers and inwardly with the kuffar. So they're not with the kuffar complete and they are not the believers incomplete. Why? Because with the kuffar, they are kuffar with their heart and they're showing that, but in their body, they are looking like believers. And when they are with the believers, their outward is believers, but yet their heart is kuffar. مثل المنافق رسول الله said the similarity of the hypocrite كمثل الشائه العائرة بين الغنمين like the sheep which is the one who is making a sound it doesn't want to go to this group it doesn't want to go to the other group تعيو لهذه مرة ولهذه مرة sometimes it goes to this group sometimes it goes to that group so this is the similarity of this hypocrite and Allah سبحانه وتعالى he had said to us الذين يتربصون بكم those are the ones waiting for the moment to go and defeat you to go and attack you قال فإن كان لكم فتح من الله if you to be winning قالوا ألم نكن معكم we will they will say to you we were with you all the time so because you're winning وقال وإن كان الكثير نصيب but if the kuffar got now the other stick the other tire the other side of the stick that means they won قالوا ألم نستحوذ عليكم ولم نعكم من المؤمنين aren't we the ones who defended you against the believers so they are this and this with the بين بين ذلك also they are looking like each other in terms of evilness these hypocrites they're looking like one another al munafiquna wal munafiqat listen to what allah says male hypocrites and female hypocrites ba'duhum min ba'd they are from one another meaning that they are looking like each other ya'muruna bil munkar wa yanhawna 'anil ma'ruf they are always commanding to do the evil and they forbid or prohibit the person to do the good thing the opposite قال ويقبضون أيديهم and always they don't give in charity نسوا الله فنسيهم they have forgotten Allah Allah forgot them that means he left them on the day of resurrection إن المنافقين هم الفاسقون those are the hypocrites are the ones who are spreading the mischief they will be always lazy in their ibada Allah will he said وإذا قاموا إلى الصلاة قاموا كسالا when they come to the prayer they come in a lazy way يرؤون الناس they only want to show off ولا يذكرون الله إلا قليلا. They only mention Allah but little. ولا يأتون الصلاة إلا وهم كسالة. They only come to the prayer when they are lazy. ولا يفقون إلا وهم كارهون. And they only spend when they don't like to spend. Prophet Sallam said the most heaviest and difficult prayer upon the hypocrites, the prayer of the Isha and the prayer of the Fajr. And if the people know what lies into them from the good, they would come to these two prayers even by crawling. And also Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, Man sarra wa an yalqa Allah ta'ala ghadam musila. He wants or to be pleased to meet Allah as a Muslim, happy with his ibadah. Then let him observe those five daily prayers where the call of the prayer is to be called, which is in the masajid. Fi buyutin adhin Allahu an turfa' wa yudhkara fiha asmu. Sabihu lahu fiha bil gudu ya al-asal. Nijalun la tulhihim tijaratu wa la bayun an zikrillah. Wa iqam al-salatu. The end of the verses. So these are the masajid. You want to come to them. Then he said, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَرَعَ لِنَبِيِّكُمْ سُنَنَ الْهُدَى And Allah had given to your Prophet Muhammad the parts of guidance to paradise. وَإِنَّ خُدْنَ مِنْ سُنَنِ الْهُدَى And coming to the prayer to do the five daily prayers in jama'ah is from the path that would lead to guidance and paradise. وَلَوْ أَنَّكُمْ صَلَّيْتُمْ فِي يُوْيُتِكُمْ And if you to pray in your house, كما يصلي هذا المتخلف في بيته like this hypocrite this person who stays behind who prays at home لا تركتم سنة نبيكم you would have abandoned the path and the sunnah of your prophet and if you to abandon the sunnah of your prophet then you would have been misguided and verily the one who will stay behind and do not come with us to the prayer in the masjid at the time of the prophet is the only one who is hypocrite whom his hypocrisy is known to everybody hypocrites they don't come to the prayer especially the Isha. And the Fajr, they come to the Lord of Asr to show that they are Muslim. The man from amongst the companions to be brought, even though that he's a bit tired, he will be put between the two people because the row is so intact. Huh? This will help him to stand up because he's not able to stand up because he's tired, but because the row is so tight and intact, that is why you find this person standing up. Also, when they are to be called these hypocrites, to hold them to the Quran and the Sunnah, 
and to the Sahaba methodology, they will refuse. And they will never do that. It will be said to them, Come إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ To what Allah had sent down, which is the Qur'an. وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ That means to the Messenger, which is the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah. رَأَيْتَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ يَصُدُّونَ عَنْكَ صُدُونَ You will find the hypocrites always pushing away. They don't want to. They want to be following their whims and desires. And the Sahaba's path and methodology is the path of salvation. He who had taken that path, he will have the happiness in this dunya and the happiness of the hereafter. والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وأعد لهم جنات تجري تحتها الأنهار to the end of the verses, the ones who are from the predecessors, مهاجري, immigrants, from Mecca to Medina, and the Ansar, the inhabitants of Medina who gave aid to them, the muhajirin, all of those, and the ones who follow them in righteousness, they are going to be pleased with Allah, that is pleased with what Allah had prepared for them, and Allah is pleased with them. And he who opposes the messenger of Allah after guidance was shown to him. And he follows other than the path of the Sahaba. Those are the believers. We'll put him in the path that he had chosen. On the day of resurrection, he will be destined to hell and what an evil abode. So the one who hates the Sahaba, the one who had hates as well their methodology, and even though that he calls himself that I am a person who wants to fix and all of that, those are the ones who are munafiqun. Because the Prophet of Allah said, Al-Ansar, la yuhibbuhum illa mu'min. The Ansar, the inhabitants of Medina, only loved by the believers. Qal, wa la yuhibbuhum illa munafiq. And the one who hates them are the hypocrites. Those are the ones who all the time ask the triumph, not with Islam, other than Islam. They ask the triumph, with their closeness to the kuffar. Allah says, give the time to the hypocrites that they're going to have a severe punishment. The ones who take the kuffar as to be the ones who are close partners beside the believers. Allah is asking this rhetorical question. Are they going to ask the triumph and honor by siding with these kuffar? The triumph and the honor is that is to follow what Allah told you to do. It's all that it belongs to Allah Azza wa Jal. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, O you who believe, listen, la tattakhidhu al-yahuda wa nasara awliya. Do not take the Christians and the Jews to be close friends. Ba'duhum awliya uwa. They are to be the ones who are friends and befriending each other. Wa ma yatawallahum minkum. And he who does have them to be uh, their close friends, fa innahu minum. He's with them. Allah does not guide the ones who are ظالمين, oppressors. You will see the ones who've got disease in their hearts. And who are they? They are the hypocrites. They've got disease in their hearts. They will all the time say they, we will are scared to be struck by calamity. Allah will bring the victory in the hands of the believers or he's a command from him. They will be regretting what they have said and thought themselves. That is, they were all the time with the disbelievers and against the believers. Also, Allah Azza wa Jal told us from their uh, description that they always prove to be treacherous and betrayal and breaking their promise. And from those who had given us their covenant to Allah Azza wa Jalla, that if Allah give us good things, we will give sadaqah. That means Allah give us wealth, we'll give sadaqah. And we will be amongst the, the pious people. When Allah gave them some of that, of his blessings and his bounty, they were stingy, they did not give anything. And they left while they are not accepting, denying. Allah had put their the hypocrisy in their hearts till the day they meet Allah Azza wa Jal because they had not fulfilled the promise which they have given to Allah. They will spend money as soon as Allah will give them and because of their lying. Don't they know Allah knows? Whatever is inside, whatever is outside, whatever they say in secrety, secrecy, or whatever they say to themselves, and Allah knows the unseen. Prophet Salami said, we have said that before, the sign of the hypocrite, one of them is to, this is to be promised, he will break his promise. Also from the punishment in the hellfire, there will be a continuous, permanent fire, 
and they were, I mean, from the descriptions, they always, uh, sorry, they always uh, trying to bring fire and conflict between the Muslims. They're always never going to stay still until they bring disaster to the believers. They don't really wish for the believers any good. So they always be happy if the believers to be struck with the calamity. Allah Azza wa had described it for us. They have always sought the fitrah from before. And when you came to Medina, they made things upside down. They don't want you to come to the Medina. Uh, and then until the haq, Muhammad وسلم, came and the matter of the Muslim became the prevalent وهم كارهون, they disliked that يقول, and then some of them they said to the Prophet لي, uh, give me a permission let me go you know, uh, not to fight because, because the Muslims they were fighting the Romans and all of that but ولا تفتني <laughs> don't make me put me in fitna because if I see the women who are blonde and blue eyes I might you know uh, I, I, I might lose my religion subhanallah they want to stay behind with any excuse قال ألا في الفتنة سقط they have fallen to the fitna the fitna they're not fighting with the Muslims وإن جهنم لا محيطة بالكافرين and جهنم is going to surround them and I'm going to expose them what is their reality إن تصبك حسنة تسؤهم if you're to be good in a good time if it's uh, prosperity befalls you, it will not be happy for them. They will not be happy with that. But if you be struck with a calamity, they would say, We have taken our precautions before. We told you. And they will leave. Oh, they are happy. They're happy because they were struck by the calamity. Say to them, nothing will strike us except what Allah had ordained in his book. Against us, he is our Mawla, he is our close friend. Allah Azza wa is the one who is our leader. Allah Subhanahu is our God. And upon Allah, let the believers rely upon. Say to them, O Muhammad, that are you are waiting for us to have one of these two things when we fight? That is either the death, which is the shahada, or the winning. So it's one of the two goods. But we also waiting for you hypocrites and you see that is either Allah will punish you with a punishment from him or we're going to punish you with that means Allah will command us to fight you and kill you you wait and we will wait also they will be finding these hypocrites are cowards in the land of the battle when there is fight they run away Prophet Allah he documented this for us in the Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu dhkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum. O you who believe, remember that the blessings of Allah had given you. If jaatkum junudun fa arsalna alayhim riha. In the battle of Ahzab, the trench, when the, all the 10,000 came surrounding the Muslims, they want to kill the Muslim, And Allah sent them the gusting wind. Wa junudan lam tarawa. And soldiers, that is the angels, which you did not see. Wa kana Allahu bima ta'manu wa basira. And Allah knows what you have been and acquainted with what you've been doing. If ja'ukum min fawqikum. They came to you from above you. I mean, asfal aminkum. And from underneath you. Wa id zaagatil absar. And the eyes were turning over because of the fear of and the hearts reached its exit because of the fear they were not able to defecate to go to relieve themselves. They were scared, they were surrounded by this kufar. And on the other side, there was the Jews that are about to break their promise and to prove to be treacherous and let the kufar to come from their side. They were so scared. And you were thinking of Allah, maybe He will not give you the victory. This time. When the believers, they were tested. And they were shaken, a lot of shake. In this moment, when the believers were shaken, uh, what did the hypocrites say? Listen. The ones who are hypocrites, they say, And the ones who got disease in their heart, Allah and his message did not give us a promise, except which is a deception. That means we're going to be wiped out. We're not going to be winning. So it is all of it. It's not really real. It's not, it's not genuine. As we have said in the verse before, those people are just always taking excuse not to participate in the fight. Those are the hypocrites. These are the description. This is their danger. They are to be spreading the mischief and the corruption in the land. And the hypocrites... We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to expose them and also we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from them 
inshallah, we will talk about those hypocrites more and more when we expose what they were to do at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, how they let the Muslims down in the last moments. Inshallah, we'll talk about that. Be in the following class, if you have any questions. And our class is always going to be after Isha. I think it's more appropriate to have it after Isha. Um, so if you have any questions, we're going to have just only 10 minutes with them left for questions. And I will take the on-ground question before the online question. Anybody here from the on-ground? Yeah. Online start as well. Fadlal? Um, um, I wasn't here for the class. And my question is you, you're not here in the class. You were here in the class. So I, didn't, I can't ask a question about it. So okay, hang on a second. Anybody got watch about the class? Fadlal. Oh, yes, you have? Yeah. About the class. Yeah, Fadlal. Yeah, Fadlal. Um, you, you said, unless I'm mistaken, that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said to said to the Sunnah Salah uh, Salah not to pray for the uh, hypocrites, but He did. So please, can you clarify that? Or did I misunderstood what you said? Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was about to pray on the Abdullah ibn Bayni Salul, and Umar Khattab was dragging him. Are you going to be praying onto the hypocrites? I do Allah. He said to Omar, let me do it because I've been given a choice and I chose to pray. So after he prayed, the ayah was sent down and the Prophet said, well, after that, he never prays upon a hypocrite. Because the Prophet Sallallahu he had an ishtihad here. What was the ishtihad? You know when the Prophet Sallallahu was in Ghazwat al-Muraisiyah, Bani al this is a battle where the Prophet of Allah, he went and he actually, uh, from that battle, he had married Juwairiyah, the Tulhara. On the way back, these hypocrites, they will never ever let the Muslims to be together. So they had erupted a fight between the Muhajirin, the immigrants, and the Ansar. And at that time, the Ansar were too many. Some of these Ansar are hypocrites, which is Abdullah ibn Bayyid So on the way back, one of the uh, Muhajirin, Kasa, kicked, kicked with his foot, one of the Ansar. So the Ansar, he called for help. Oh, Ansar, come. This is the erupted with the fitna. They want to bring fitna. Fitna means a quarrel. So the Muhajir says, oh, Muhajir, come. So they're about to fight now. The hypocrites are happy with this. So the Prophet wasallam went out and he was so enraged and angry. He said, Adawal Are you going to be coming back to your jahiliya time, vendetta and revenge while I'm amongst you? Da'uha fa innaha muntina. Leave it for when it stinks. This is stinks that is to have this fight between the two sides. Now, when this hypocrite Abdullah ibn Bayyim Salul, he knew about what had happened. So he said, Well, did they do it? This these gangsters? He's talking about the Muhajirin. Did they do it? Led by the Prophet, these gangsters, wallahi, when we go to the Medina, then they will know who is going to be Al Az, going to be to do with Adal. Al Az, the one who's triumph, going to do with Adal, which is humiliated. He means himself, is the one triumph, and the Prophet of Allah, he's the one humiliated. Al Az and Adal. These are the hypocrites. So, on the way to the Medina, Allah, the son of his, which is a companion, he heard about what his father he said. So he said, is it you? Telling to his father that you have said la yukhrijanna min al-azul adhal the one who's going to be the az trying is going to be bringing out the adhal humiliated. Is that you? I would not going to let you to go inside the Medina and let the Prophet ﷺ give permission. That's how it is. Breaking the relationship with him. Father, this is the Prophet ﷺ. Why do you need to say this? Okay. So what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salul, when he done this, Umar ibn Khattab, he said, Messenger of Allah, let me kill him. Because he said these words. Let me cut off his head. Prophet Salam, he said, no. لا يتحدث الناس أن محمد أن يقتل أصحى. I don't want other people to say that Muhammad is killing his own companion. Because he looks like a companion. He looks like a believer. So if he kills him, he said that Muhammad is killing the Muslims. Okay. That's why the Prophet offered the prayer onto him. That's why the Prophet didn't even move. He dug him out. He blew into him. He gave him his shirt. Uh, all of it just to satisfy his son. Okay. But everybody knows he's a hypocrite. Al Khattabi doesn't let go. Oh, Messenger of Allah is the enemy of Allah. Can you pray on him? 
He just was so pushy, Amal Khattab, because he knows that he's a hypocrite. But the Prophet said, leave me. So he left him. Then Allah Azza wa Jal had synchronized with what Omar had said. That is, لا تصلي على أحد من أمانا. أما تأبد. لا تقوم على قبره. No way. Don't stand even next to the grave. إنهم كفروا بالله ورسوله. وما توهم فاسقون. نعم. فضل. And there are those Muslims who always constantly criticize other Muslims, especially when they are in a the period where there's a lot of suffering within that particular community of the Muslims. Like for example, Gaza, you know, and etc. So there are some brothers, there are Muslims who constantly criticize the Muslims that are going through this. Criticize the one who's being killed? No, I've never seen this. The ones, you know, they were not the ones who've been killed, but obviously the ones who are also... Um, Triggered the fight. Just say it. Yeah, yeah, and also the ones who yeah, it's clear. It's just, yeah, and also the ones who are basically resisting us all the time. So in, in that in this circumstance where we are in this situation, that has nothing we, to do with hypocrisy. We, nothing, we, nothing to do with one with hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. One of the one who criticizes, the one who doesn't criticize, the ones who don't criticize, could be say wrong, right, but can't say hypocrisy. Listen mm -hmm. to that. No Muslim who's got an atom weight of iman in his heart, and you will agree with me that he would agree of what is taking place in terms of killing the Muslims there. No way. If he has, then he's not a Muslim. He definitely. But because of their sympathizing with those people, they are also enraged from a different angle. For those people who had caused this thing, it's a different thing here. So if they were not happy with those, it doesn't mean they are happy that those people be killed. A'udhu Billah. But you could tell them maybe this is not the time to talk about it and to say this is that and give more ammunition to the ones who are killing to go and kill more. Okay, I could understand that. Do you understand me? No, I'm talking about that particular the one, the last thing that you just mentioned right now, where they are constantly talking about the pop, what has caused it instead of you know making you know instead, instead of basically making the half of the. I do, dear gosh. I say, brother. You're taking a stance against a particular person, yeah. uh, particular two people, three people. Uh, Everybody makes dua to them. Everybody. Sure. But don't be as well siding with this against this. I'm, I'm neutral. Yeah. Don't be so hot on these as well. But because they are criticizing those, because there are some scholars criticizing what this is happening. Scholars, not just the old people. No, no, I, I and at the same it. time, and at the same in this moment, it's, uh, yeah, scholars it's... criticizing this. I could just mention a number of scholars. I just been today with talking to some of the scholars about this issue. And the Atifa, uh, this fitna, akhwani, this is like the one that Umar Khattab had said, Kamuj, Kamuj is Bahar. It's waves like the sea. You know, even the ones who are students of knowledge had fallen to this fitna. And the Atifa, the emotion, had captured their hearts. And they started not to think sensibly. Not to think sensibly. So I, I would not going to be putting them down because they said wrong things into this fitna, because I know that this fitna is very hard. So when we have scholars, like at the time of Sheikh Al-Albani, okay, when he says something, the fitna is finished. Khalas. You see, say something, everybody settles. Khalas. His words, that said is finished. Everybody settles to it. The scholar, he knows. But these days we have people who are running the show, but they have no knowledge. YouTubers. Young people, isn't it? And they say, don't listen to the scholars. Who are outside Palestine, they don't know anything about what's happening in Palestine. SubhanAllah. All the students who are in Gaza, they take all the knowledge from those people who are outside Gaza, from the scholars. You say they're not, don't listen to them now? Don't take fatwa from them? Because they don't know the situation? I think you don't know the situation. You are living with kebab and kufta and all of that, and happy, and those people being killed and massacred, and you're just making whatever words you well, don't listen to this and don't listen. I say to brother, please, Motions is not correct. We have to listen to what the Prophet ﷺ had said to us. Prophet of Allah, I don't think anybody in this gathering would have a doubt that he is the most important person for us. If anything happens to him, we should have to defend him. True or not? Do anybody disagree with this? When the Prophet ﷺ in the time of Mecca, when the power and the control was in the hands of the Kuffar, Kuffar of Quraysh, Prophet ﷺ is prostrating. This Uqbah ibn Abi Mu'ayyid, may Allah curse him, he died as a kafir. He drags the placenta of the camel. Big, massive placenta, which is about 30, 50 kilos. 
This is the guts, you know, the intestines. Blah, blah, blah. And he puts it on the back of the profitable. And the profitable can't lift his shoulders. Now, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is watching. He's an adult and he's a shepherd and he's a strong person. But he's got common sense. If he's going to go and defend him, he's going to be what? Well, killed. Because he's got no power, he's weak. So what he did, he went to the piece of to his daughter, the little one, 12, 10 years old, Fatima. He called her. She came. She saw her father down. She's swearing at them. And they don't really think to her because she's a kid and trying to help her father remove this placenta from the top of the back of the prophecy. When we are in time of weakness, Ya Ikhwani, it's not correct to fight. And when we are in times of strength, it's not correct to make peace. We have to have our land. Do you understand that? So this is wrong and this is wrong. We have to go for what the Prophet ﷺ told us to do. Now, so some say, some of my say at the time of the Prophet ﷺ wasn't permitted to use the fire. Mm. Example, what was not permitted? Why he was not permitted? No, no, we know why he was not permitted. <laughs> yeah. This is common sense. Mm. It's common sense. It's common sense. It doesn't really need. So the Prophet وسلم, in the time of weakness, even in time and leader, قال, فصبروا, فصبروا, be patient. Okay, I'm not here fighting, I'm just saying that. <clears throat> This is common sense. When you are in time of weakness, you don't go and commit your suicide. And you just go and present yourself. So when the Prophet ﷺ started sending those people to assassinate, they go back and they've got a country to defend them. But when you're sending your firework, I call it firework, not really a rocket, and then it goes there, and these people <clears throat> kill instead of one, 20. And it's a jihad. I don't call this jihad. That is not jihad. Fiqh al jihad is not like this jihad al munafiqin. Allah says about the hypocrites, if they wanted to really fight, you would have prepared. This is not war. This is genocide. War is had to be conflict between, between two sides which are almost equal. At least, like you know, Ukraine, Russia, and European. That's war. But these people, miskeen, they got nothing. Miskeen. You think the Muslims there are happy? Oh, yes, go and fight and make jihad. I'm not. You are just here. They said with the kebab. I'm with the kebab. And, ah, make it. But we don't know. We're, we're not seeing the boo, boo. When you hear it, you'll be terrified. Children now, they're writing their names onto their legs, you know, because in case they're being bombed, and so people can recognize them. Who are they being so de de killed? Khwani. It's not time to criticize, but it's not time to criticize the one who criticizes. I would say it is time to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unfortunately, we don't learn our lessons. Every time these people, they do this thing, after a while they say, ah, Tufan al-Aqsa, we won. Who is the winning? Yeah. And then we give this winning to whom? To al rafida To al rafida Today, Abu Haniya, you know who's the, the leader of Hamas? He's with Khamenei. Today, just today, today, today. Go and see him. Today, he went to Khamenei. He had met him. I didn't say that. The Hamas said that. <clears throat> With it. Ya Ikhwani. Do not like the kuffar. Ar-Rafida, his deen, is that you do not exist as a people of Sunnah. Do you understand that? Omar, Bakr, they kill him straight away. Ar-Rafida, those are the Safawiyya. They entered 1979 with Khomeini into Iran. And the Jews had entered Palestine 1948, okay? From 1948 until today, the Jews did not even kill 10% of what the Safawi had killed from 1979 until today. Do you understand? You haven't read it. You don't have count there. You know, you have to have statistics properly. The statistic has to be properly. Not even 10% of those Safawi, when they got the command in Iraq, what they done to the people of the Sunnah? Drill them. One person who had from the people of Zarqawi, who had left the Guantanamo. He was being released. And he was sent to Jordan. He'd been given a, an interview. And he was saying, he had repented from Khawarijan. He was a Khariji. He said he was captured by Iran. He was put into prison about a week. And then he was transferred to America. He, under the table to Guantanamo Bay. He said, one hour 
Sorry, I would rather spend one year in Guantanamo Bay than to spend one hour in Iran's prison in the Rawafat. That's how the torture that he had met in Guantanamo Bay was torture. Well, it's like Jannah for a paradise compared to what the Rafida they do. The Rafida, their deen is there. That is, you, al Sunnah, do not exist. Your his deen is that to blow you out. So they don't have, it's not this comparison between making it. I would rather to have, I'm talking now, and I know what I'm talking about. If I had the choice, I know other choice. Where Al-Quds is going to be under? The leadership of Iran and Rawafat or are Jews? I prefer the Jews. Do you understand if I had only these two choices? Jews and Christians, I could eat from their rabiha, their food. I could marry from their women, but I'm not allowed to, to marry or eat from a Rafidi who says my mother Aisha, she's a fornicator. Who says my Quran is what? Is being huh, forged. I'm not going to put my hands in their hands. But these people, they do. These people, they too put their hands on their hands. We've been going to them today. And after that, they say, we give this uh, victory, which is not a victory, to Iran such and such. Yeah, we have to know who's our enemies. We have to learn our lesson. When are we going to be waking up? Stop the emotions. Stop the emotions. So this is on the expense of the blood of our brothers. I live in Palestine, and I used to live, I, I, I'm from, from a place called Beersheba, which is next to Gaza. It's not about that far from Gaza. And I know what is taking place as well. I'm in contact with people as well. So, yeah, in the time of weakness, we have to wait. You were weak. That was the time of the people of Mecca. Allah, you're not going to be punished, O Muhammad, when you are with them. Did not Allah punish these people of Mecca? Did not make them to even enter Mecca until uh, it's been freed and liberated from the Muslim. Allah al Alayhi Tuklam. Both sides have to calm down, Ikhwani. And I would say to you, just make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm asking, where are the people for this class? You got about what, 20 people, 30 people here? Huh? Where are the people? Put a singer here. They will pay tickets to come. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to be champion Gaza. Okay. Champion Gaza, no, the protest. They go to protest I know, but it's not, <laughs> but with not, it is not, take it easy because you're not come down. You're already maybe emotion now. Lost. Take it easy, take it easy. You're emotioned. Take That's not correct. Yeah. More important, just to know. So the protest 250, 300, maybe half a million. Where are the half a million in the message? What are they? We had half a million in the masajid. Well, Allah, when people respond to our dua. Mm. Half a million outside. I'm not saying he negative, negative, negative. But that's what is happening. But I'll tell you what. Inshallah, it'll be a positive. Allah's messenger, he said. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. That Allah will give us a promise. That لو اجتمع من بأقطارها If all the ones who hate Islam and Muslim get together from around the whole globe, they will not be able to wipe us out. That's a promise. Walakin, that's who by now. The conflict is amongst the Muslim. You just be now criticizing Brother Muslim. The Brother Muslim criticizing you. And that's what is happening. Conflict between us. We should listen to the scholars, not to the YouTubers. Scholars, not YouTubers. YouTubers are plenty. Scholars. Scholars are, it's got, you know, it's got some gray hair. He's old man. It's not a youth. Great hair, huh? Man, old. That's like old geezer, huh? That's the scholar you want to listen to. Yeah. Not a person who just came yesterday and he was born in Sargana. He doesn't have anything. No experience, nothing. But by this, I want to uh, conclude. Uh, yeah, this one, yeah. Yeah. The clock? Oh, the class. All right. Okay, but, but we have an older person than you who's next to me. Kepper, person who said, make it the priority of the person is older. Father. I'm sorry, are you old or not? Sometimes you bless him as a Nabi. What's the difference between a Nabi and a Rasul? Have you got two titles and what is for each title? Well, I mean, whatever you address him, you are you are Nabi or you are you are Rasul, both are respected terms. 
as why we have to maybe uh, have a difference among the scholars. Why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes addressed them as Ya Ayyuhar Rasul or Ya Ayyuhar Nabi? But let me tell you something that when Allah addresses something with Ya Ayyuhar Nabi or Ya Ayyuhar Rasul, we have to follow these words. Meaning, Prophet Muhammad he taught Al Bara ibn Azam the saying, the dua of going to the bed. And then he says in that dua, And then he says in that dua, He said, With the Prophet you have sent. So this dua ibn Azib, he wanted to repeat the dua. He said, Allah minni aslam tu wajhi ilayk, wa fawwattu amri ilayk, wa aljatu dhahri ilayk, rahmatan wa rahmatan la ilayk. Allah minni amantu bi kitabika alladhi anzalt. And he said, wa bi rasulika alladhi arsalt. He just changed it. Prophet is a poke in the name. Say, ye nabiika. Don't change. Even the nabi is almost equal to the rasul. But we know that every nabi is a messenger. He gives messages. Sorry, and every messenger is a prophet. But when we say every Nabi is a Rasul, uh, we don't say, uh, meaning that the Prophet, if he's to be a Rasul, it's like he's a, a Nabi plus. A Nabi plus. Meaning the Nabi has uh, been uh, commanded to convey the message, but not to the ones who are outside his you know, area. It's not to the ones who are disbelievers, to the ones who are believers. The Rasul is to the believers and the disbelievers. Just to add, as like the war, especially in the war, and there were 11 human aid workers, uh, my son is uh, sponsoring them to Gaza, they all got killed uh, just mm -hmm. recently. 11 of them, some of them were driving the ambulances to the hospitals, and they were the victims mm -hmm. of this bombing. And secondly, um, the point I wanted to raise um, because of democracy, our representative in the United Nations made a speech and he said he was a Muslim, you might know him, and uh, he was siding with Israel and he used his uh, platform to say he's a Muslim and that was very hurtful when I heard the speech, I don't know if you could, I can name the man, but uh, uh, that was very painful when I heard it. Any person chooses to be fluctuating is a hypocrite. Any person who chooses to be a believer and then a disbeliever is a hypocrite. Okay? Whether he is, when he was a believer, pure believer, whether he is a kafir, a pure kafir, is fluctuating, he's a hypocrite. He's choosing to be this or this. But usually it's the case that this person, he has kufr inside and pretends to be a Muslim, usually. That's the hypocrite. As for the small hypocrisy, I think most of the Muslims these days are small hypocrites. What are they? That the person, he is believer in Allah inside, but his actions does not prove that. He fornicates, he lies. He's called his small hypocrisy. He's still a believer. He believes in Allah, but he drinks and humanizes and all of that. The small hypocrisy. Allah's... Uh, That's what small? It's called small compared with a major. Because major is small, meaning it's not kafir. I'm sorry, uh, this question of this person, I just put this person because he had asked me the first. Fadal. Okay, so how many, how much time should we really wait until the sun had risen to pray my Torah? Ka? <laughs> just what's how many minutes? We cannot pray immediately when the sun is rising. We have to wait at least not twenty minutes, fifteen minutes. But you said the horns. That's why when they blow the shaitan, they blow him with horns. I don't know why. Ikhwani, <laughs> karm here doesn't mean horn. Karm has got lots of meaning. Karm here, wrongly translated the horn of the shit. That's why they would do the shit on the poor, no two horns. Meaning, this is, you know, the, you know, each one's got a horn, if you like. Now you've got a horn. And that is the two sides of your head. It's called horns. Korun. Okay? Even there's no particular horn coming out, but this is. So basically, the shaitan, he prays at that time and that you are synchronizing with his prayer. That's what it is. 
جزاكم الله خير وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك وبارك الله فيك.